Oh yeah. yeah, we back. Yeah, I'll see it. I know you see it. WDX G1 six and a half dual four. The unboxing. Now this is different from the G2. I think in the W and DB drive line and the DB drive line because the companies is DB Research and on the DB Research you have DB Drive. You got Euphoria, DB Lake, and Quantum Audio. All those companies belong to DB Research. But in the WDX line, which is their high end, is the DB Drive line. In a G1 series, you have a six and a half. You also have a eight, 10, 12. And I think that, yeah, I don't know if they have, we'll look and see if they got a 15. This is the unboxing. You get your warranty card. We all know about the warranty card. Okay. You get your sticker that we don't use. All right. You can if you want to. Come here, you live in. And we get our manual. And our manual, you can see it comes in a six and a half. It goes six and a half, eight, 10, 12, and 15. The entire series is dual four, it does not come dual two. So any two dual four will give you one on load. Any four will give you a two on load. Uh, eight will give you a one on load. I think you'll be happy with a four on load, uh, depending on what amplifier you got, even with a two on load. So, unboxing here. Huh? Is out. You can use this as a cutout if you want. Alright, now let's get out the G1 six and a half. Make sure you look at the description on the video. It's different from the G2. This is the G1. Nothing else is inside the box. Alright. Oh, nice looking at it. Nice looking for their, this is, okay, you got G1, so this is their entry level, all right, and, and their high end, because you got G1, G2, and then G5. This is the entry level. It's wrapped in plastic, put the plastic on, and there we go. I know y'all looking at me like, man, that's a very stout six and a half inch driver. And yes, it is. Very, very stout six and a half inch driver. All right, I stop up. I start up top with the yeah, carbon fiber dust cap. Yeah, WDX DB Drive. I really like how they did this the logos. Uh, then we come up top to the high roll surround, which is not that high for a six and a half inch driver. Single stitch, the, the surround is stitched to the cone. It has a non press, yeah, non press paper cone. Nice gasket. The gasket is standard on the entry level. I mean, it's just a standard gasket. Uh, man, we nice basket, rough texture to the basket. It is similar to the G1 8, 10, 12 and 15, just a smaller version. Um, it has one. Does it have one? Oh no. No, me a mistake there. No, it has two. Put my finger in there. It has two spiders. Yes, it does. It has space spiders, spider pack. The spiders are progressive roll. Poly damp, nice, nice glue to triple joint. The tensile leaves are sewn into the top spider. The push terminals will accept, look like 10 gauge for sure. Maybe eight. Eight gonna be a snug fit, but 10, 12 for sure. All right. The top plate, the top plate looks to be about. 
a little more, maybe a little more than an eighth of an inch. Single slug, protective magnet boot, decorated purchases for uh, purposes when you're inside the enclosure. All this thing will do is hold heat to the motor. You might want to take that off inside the box. Vented. Okay, we got a bump back plate, and it's vented. And I think here on the back, they also tell you uh, the, yeah, dual voice coil, 600 watt max, it's supposed to be 300 watts RMS. But this is a very, this is a nice six and a half, don't you think? This is a six and a half vintage coil. The voice coil, the voice coil is one and a half inches. Whereas the G2 has a two inch voice coil. Yeah, I've seen the performance of the G2. Now let's look at the, uh, what they tell you here. Okay. It's got a BSV black aluminized, uh, SV high temperature voice coil, and everything goes with that name. Nothing else different here. 71 ounce magnet. It is not. Mm, it's just large ferrite magnet. Now look at the parameters. The parameters are as follows. The resonant frequency is 58. The uh, total QTS is 0.68, which means it's leaning very more so into a port enclosure than sealed. Uh, the one about the FS being so high, because remember the FS, there's two things with the FS. The FS says that this is what it will play, but it, it will play in the free air environment, but the FS will lower as the sewer foot breaks in because the the, where it, the CMS will lower, which is the mechanical compliance of suspension because it will get looser. Uh, and, oh man, I'm not trying to get too, too overly confident, but there's the electrical mechanical, as, as the, the QES, as the, as the signal goes in and out, uh, and the glue gets burned off and the suspension starts to loosen then the FS will drop in layman's terms. The FS also does not say how low a sofa can play. The enclosure it in will dictate how low it will play. What the FS does is tell you that any frequencies below that the sofa will have a hard time in reproducing. It will be challenging for the sofa to, to reproduce that and that's why you put them in a vented enclosure because the port's going to help the subwoofer at that point. The FS will lower, but also, since you put in a port in enclosure, the port will help the subwoofer produce those frequencies because in a port in enclosure, the port is actually louder than the radiating effect of the cone. Okay? All right, sound press level is 80.2. The X max is 10 millimeters. I don't know if that's one way or both ways because if it's both ways, then the X max is five. Um, in most DB, how they list things, they list things one way. They tell you if it's two ways, like on the speed series. So this is 10 millimeters one way. Uh, I will say this, by having a 1.5 inch voice coil, the sp it's similar to a DB drive G5, but because they have the small uh, uh, Voice call. I'm thinking it's gonna have a larger spider, and let me, uh, I'm gonna break that down. The, I mean, oh, the the mass is 77.157 grams, so it's it's not heavy. So I don't think the base will be since the MMS is low. The base won't necessarily be all that deep, but with that motor strength, the BL being I think around about average. The BL is what here yeah, seven, and the strength of the motor in relation to how light the cone is is more SPL gear even though we're talking about a six and a half inch the motor is not all that strong but the soft parts the surround the cone the spider the former the voice core is not that heavy anyway it's only seven seven grams so you're looking for something that's going to move very very fast uh I would tentatively say this is best suited very best suited for a ported application uh, and because of the six and a half inch subwoofer, tune very low. It already has a high FS, and that's any six and a half. Because when you think about this, when you're dealing with a six and a half, 
subwoofer. You don't have that much cone anyway. And whatever large size cone you have, the spider's gonna be a little bit smaller. If the cone, if you cut out six inches, which is the edge of the surround, then the spider is gonna be inside that by maybe it's five and seven, five and 5.75 inches. So you got the cone and then you got the spider. Remember they move in unison, being dictated by the AC current going through the voice coil, which is going on the windings, that and actuate makes it move back and forth because a subwoofer is a passive device. It's not, it's getting its instructions from the amplifier, okay? So because you're dealing with a six and a half inch cone, you're dealing with a five or some inch spider, the spider landing. And even though you do have two, that's gonna to contribute to having a high FS because you're not gonna get that much movement. Okay, that's why your X Max is not that it's not that great because you don't you don't have that much spider for it to move. With that being said, it needs a port and closure, and you need to tune it low because as you go below tuning, since it doesn't have a large enough spider, it's really going to unload faster. And I'm going to touch on that on another video later. But with a six and a half inch driver, always tune very, very low. They recommend 38. That doesn't mean you can't go below 38. When I had, when I designed it, when I built a box for a guy for trucks or any any vehicle and they want a, a six and a half inch, whether it's four, six, whatever, or two, I tune about 30 hertz. It's gonna play the high frequencies well anyway. It's the FS is 58. So it's gonna play 58 and 65 and 78. It's gonna do that fine anyway. It needs help to dig low. So you need to tune the enclosure low. Also, when dealing with a six and a half inch driver, if you look at the box specs that they give you, and it's just a recommendation, you know, every vehicle is different. The box specs they give you, they tell you to tune uh, a seal box is 0.33, a vending box is 0.64. Now, this driver operates in a smaller enclosure than the G5, G5 is slightly bigger than that. Uh, and it does have a, a smaller vast, so that's, that's pretty much why that happens, so that it can work in a smaller enclosure. And also, give you a little tip. The porting recommended porting is 0 0.6. It's with a, <laughs> with, one inch, with a one inch port, one inch area port. I would recommend you do that. It's hard to get the displacement of the sub and a good low tuning in such a small space because the tune, the port has to be so long. So the good thing about six and a half is that you can get more in less space. If you look at cone area, two six and a halves have a little bit more cone area. And in fact, let me show you exactly so we'll know what we're dealing with here. So you can know exactly where we go right here. Look at my phone, cone area card. Cone area chart, okay. All right. Two six and a half have a total square inches of 66 square inches, whereas one eight is 50.24. One eight, most eights need at least 0.5 to play in. So you had two, you got 1.5 plus 1.5 is one cubic foot, okay. One cubic foot is uh, enough space for three six and a halves. So you got two eights with a total of with a total of a uh, hundred and forty eight square inches. Now, if you go one point two and get you four six and a halves, then your cone area is one. 132 square inches. That's almost like having another eight, almost closely. So, in the same space that you could put two eights, you could put four six and a half. And since we know cone area is king, the four six and a half 
will be louder if you tune correctly. Remember, the six and a half tune as low as possible because they need help below tuning. They don't have enough spider to control the movement that's necessary to play below tuning. They really, a six and a half really falls off below tuning. I'm talking about like immediately. Immediately it's going to fall off. So just keep that in mind. All right. So that's the advantage. Why people going six and a half? And get you a, I mean, this is a very stout, very nice looking six and a half. So I'm going to, of course, we're going to do a free air test and then I'm going to build a box. And we're going to put the ones that I have on hand, the, G, the G5, the G1, and the Toro. We're going to put them in a box and let them see how they perform, you know, and go from there. If you need six and a half DV drive, send me a message. Maybe I can work out with you. Maybe I can work for you. Uh, and I do, and I will be able to offer you a warranty. You know, get them for me. Something go wrong. Uh, we get them out of the box, do unboxing, whatever, and something go wrong. We can send it in for warranty. All right? We have to send it back to them. We send it back in for warranty. So, here's the unboxing of the G1. Very nice looking six and a half, I want to say. That is a very nice looking six and a half inch woofer. <laughs> Peace.